morning class welcome to another lesson in re2 and today we'll continue our lesson with christian ethics that is module 3. today let's talk about the criteria standards and methods of christian ethics what are our desired learning outcomes firstly You'll be able to compare the emphasis of each criterion of ethics and give examples for it. Identify the basic standards or final authorities of Christian ethics. And observe cleanly the methods of Christian ethics and relate the same to their life. So let's proceed. What are the different criteria of Christian ethics? Where should we base our Christian ethics? The first one is the criterion of right. It emphasizes on the duty of man. The following are the prescribed duties of man. It is the duty of man to practice what is true and noble, as found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. It is the duty of man to be productive, as found in Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 to 12. It is the duty of man to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God, as found in Micah 6, 8b. So there you have it, the criterion of right. The second one is known as the criterion of good. It emphasizes the purpose of man what are the primary purpose of man firstly to love god above everything else and to love his or her neighbor as found in matthew 22 verses 37 to 40. of course we have discussed this also in our lesson about the five purposes of man and what is the greatest good to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, as found in Matthew 6, verse 33, and to do the will of God from the heart. And finally, we have the criterion of fit. It emphasizes the situation of man. So these are the sayings of Jesus it fits this criteria the first one is found in mark chapter 2 verse 27 it says the sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath in mark 12 17 render to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's and of course don't forget this saying what you are is God's gift to you, and what you become is your gift to God. Let's proceed to the standards of final authorities. What are the standards or the final authorities for what is right and wrong? The first one is and can be found in Jesus Christ. His life and teachings are the standards of Christian behavior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, as found in John chapter 14, verse 6. And of course, don't forget the Word of God or the Bible it says that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17. Finally, let's proceed to the methods of Christian ethics. What are the methods we can use in choosing Christian ethics? Firstly, is intuition. What is intuition? Intuition means insight, instinct, 
or moral sense. It could also mean perception or conscience. The blind man who cannot totally see can still walk across the street with his rod because he has this insight or perception. Man, by nature, has a moral sense because he was created in the image of God. It is this moral sense that dictates him to do good. When he commits mistakes, he feels guilty because he has this conscience. So every one of us are given by God with intuition. Second one is a faith in God. We know that an experience is good, right, or fit according to the will of God. The will of God is concretely expressed in the form of a human flesh, none other than His very Son, Jesus Christ. We can only discern God's will if we have to relate our own life to Jesus Christ through the workings of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to have faith in Him and receive Him as our Lord and personal Savior. Then and only then can the Holy Spirit work in and through us. The will of God is a matter of experiencing God in life through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. And finally, we have reason. It is also called the power of discrimination. When God created man in his own image, it is coupled not only with conscience or moral sense but also with reason, because God created man as a rational being. Man thinks and analyzes certain situations, implications, and experiences before making moral decisions. So there you have it. I hope that may we continue to choose what is good, right, and fit in the standard of God and his word by using our intuition reason and our faith in god and remember to put our faith in action because trusting in god is not a spectator sport that's all for today god bless and thanks for watching to god be the glory see you again in another lesson about ethics.